Hi, Andrew here from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I'd like to teach you how to find the dimensions that will yield a minimum cost without knowing calculus. So let's take a look. It says a rectangular box with a square base is to have a volume of 20 cubic feet. The material for the base costs 30 cents per square foot, the material for the sides costs 10 cents per square foot, and the top costs 20 cents per square foot. Determine the dimensions, I had a little trouble with that word, uh, that will yield the minimum cost. All right, let x uh, be equal to the side of the base. So here I have a nice little picture already done. Here is our rectangular box. And they said that it has a square base, so we know that, the, let's say, the length here and the width here must be equal to each other. And there is some unknown then height. All right. Now, what we need to do um, is we need to kind of dissect the information. And first thing is to uh, actually start with the end in mind. All right. Begin with the question. I mean, it's or the problem statement. It says determine the dimensions that will yield the minimum cost. So what I need is I really need a function, all right? I need a mathematical equation here, something that, you know, something here equals something on the other side. Um, that uh, describes the cost <clears throat> because I need to somehow minimize it. So in order to minimize the cost, I need a function for the cost. Now we can think about this if we had to make a, a box. You know that the material costs some amount per square foot. And it's telling us all of that information up here. And it's saying that the base of the box is going to cost 30 cents per square foot. So the base of the box here is going to be at the bottom. I can label that little b, right? So for the base, the cost of that base is going to be the area of this base, right? whatever that area is, multiplied then by 30 cents, right? Because it's basically saying that it's going to be 30 cents per square foot. So imagine if you had one square feet here, one square foot, it would be 30 cents. If you had two square feet, it would be 60 cents. And three square feet, it would be uh, 90 cents. If you had a half of a square foot, it'd be 15 cents, right? So what you're doing is you're really saying that the cost for the base is going to be equal to the uh, average cost per square foot, which is 30 cents. And I'm not going to, I'll just write cents, I guess I'll write it this way, per square foot. I'm going to abbreviate square foot that way, times then the number of square feet, right? And now, if we have that understanding down, we also then can understand that the cost of the sides, right? Now, keep in mind that you have four sides of the box, right? Side number one would be the front face, side number two is the right face, side number th uh, three would be the back, and side number four is going to be the left, so, and you know that each of those, based on my picture, each of those is going to have a certain dimension X and a certain dimension H, right? Each of them will. So for the right face here, it's going to be this X times that H in terms of the square footage. For the back face, it's going to be this length there, which is also X multiplied by then the height, right? So basically what I'm saying is that we're going to take now this, 10 cents per square foot, because that's how much it is um, <clears throat> telling us in the problem that these sides cost. It says the sides are going to cost 10 cents per square foot. So I'm going to take now the 10 cents per square feet. All right. And I'm going to multiply it then by the number of square feet. And I should really say here, I'll write here for the sides. I'll write square feet of the sides. I have to be a little bit more specific. And this is for the base. Okay. And then the cost for the top is going to be the same thing, right? The top, there's only one top to the box, and they told us it's 20 cents per square foot. The top of the box is going to be here, and it's going to be 20 cents then per square foot, or in the lingo of construction, per square, right? Just to communicate it faster, they're like, uh, 20 cents per square. Well, 20 cents per square foot, right? You know, sometimes when you get into the uh, into the industries of things, they start chopping off uh, words just to make, I guess, communication faster. Anyway, number of square feet of the um, top. Not really sure if that added any value to your life, but hey, what the hell? So we then understand that, uh, right, if I know the cost of the base and I know the cost of the sides and I know the cost of the top, then the total cost, total cost should be equal to the 
sum, right, of all these <clears throat> costs, right? So the cost of the base plus the cost of the sides to, uh, plus then the cost of the top, all right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take this, what I did over here, and I'm going to start to then plug in these terms into each of these parts of my total cost formula, all right? Now, I have to get also a little bit more, uh, instead of maybe using some of these number of square feet of the base, all right, I have to start now using some variables in there, okay? Now, you know, so in terms of the cost of the base, it's going to be 30 cents per square foot. Now, I'm going to leave out the units just to uh, simplify this a little bit, but it's going to be 30 multiplied then by the number of square feet of the base. And the number of square feet of the base here can be found by just simply taking the length times the width of that box. So it's just x times x, which is also known as x squared, right? So I'm just going to say multiply by x squared, all right? Plus then the cost for the sides, all right? Now, each side, remember, we said had a value of x in terms of its square area. It's going to be its x times its h. But remember, you had four of them, okay? So in other words, we're going to take our 10 cents per square foot, and we're going to multiply it then by 4 times x times h. Because remember, the square area here for each side is going to be x times h, but you have four sides. So that's why that would give us the total then number of square feet of all the sides, okay? And then, last but not least, to get the uh, cost of the top, it's going to be same thing, 20 then times now the number of square feet of the top. And the number of square feet of the top here is going to be x times x again, right? Because this is the length and that's the width of the box. So it's just going to be 20 times then uh, x squared. All right, now what I'm going to do so I'm going to erase some of this stuff to give us some more space. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to now combine some like terms and try to formalize this maybe a little bit more, okay? So we have the total cost, I'm just going to label it TC, is going to be equal to, I can combine these two terms, right? 20x squared and 30x squared. So that's going to be 50x squared. Plus then 10 times 4 is going to be 40xh. All right, so this is my function. This is the total cost function. And I, if I knew what this side is, or this length, and this width, and this height, I can plug it into this formula and find the total cost of my box. All right, now remember, this is the function now that we have to minimize, okay? We have to find the minimum of it. Now, you cannot find the minimum of this function yet because you basically have three unknowns. You don't know the total cost. You don't know uh, the sides, uh, I keep saying size, you don't know the length or the width, they're both the same, and you don't know the height, all right? So you have three unknowns, right? Because this is, even though you might say, well, isn't that four total cost, length, width, height, four things? Well, that is four things, but remember the, the length and the width are the same. So it's really three unknowns, all right? Now, <clears throat> there's nowhere else I can really go from here, all right? I, under, I, can real, I can also see that this is really like y is equal to 50, x squared plus 40 x h so what i what i really need to do i cannot plug this into the calculator what i really need to do is i need to somehow figure out is there any way i can substitute out this h and put an x in for it all right now that's where the other piece of information they told us what the volume of the box is now why did they do that well they did that because we need that piece of information or some other piece of information in order to actually solve the problem so now what I need to do is I realize that there's nowhere else I can go with this. I need to transition. I need to now uh, look for other information in the problem um, that can maybe help me solve this. So I change gears and I'm saying, okay, what can I do with the volume now? Well, I know the volume of a box is simply going to be the length times the width times the height. I don't know how that H got there with the width, but you know what I'm saying. So this is going to be the volume. All right, there's the formula. Now they told us what the volume is. It's going to be 20 cubic feet. And that's supposed to be equal to the length of that box, which we can call x, times the width of that box, which we can call x, times the height of that box, which we just called h. So this is basically now a formula. 20 is equal to x squared times h. Now the beauty of this is that I have now these two equations, okay, that I have put in boxes, and I realize that I can solve this equation. Now this is the key insight. Remember, I know I need to somehow substitute out this H. 
I now have a formula that has H in it, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. If I can just solve this formula for H, then I can take that result and plug it on in for H there. And it would be in terms of then X, watch. If you solve this for H, you have to divide out X squared from both sides, right? That would cancel on the right-hand side. So essentially what would be left is you would have 20 over X squared is equal to then H. Now I'm gonna take this result, since that is equal to H, and plug it in for that H there, okay? And what's going to then result, I'll move this over to the side a little bit, what's going to result is it's gonna look like this. Y is then equal to 50 X squared plus 40 X times 20 over X squared. And now I don't have an H in there anymore. All right, I don't have my H in there. Now this is great, okay, this is great. I'm gonna move this over here a little bit. See, can I angle this? Yeah, that's good enough. There. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of simplify some terms here, right? I realize I can cancel some X's and maybe what I'll do also is I'll try to reduce this, resize this slightly. All right, so we're gonna do 50 X squared plus then 40, well, I could do 40 times 20, right? That's going to be 800. Okay, 800, all over then x. Now I can finally use this formula and plug it into my calculator. Now remember, the y here represents, um, the y there represents the total cost, okay? So this is the total cost, and the x then represents the length and the width, all right, because they're the same. So what you do now is you go to your calculator. Clear out everything else that's in there. You're gonna plug in 50 x squared, okay, plus now, 800 divided by X. And let's go to, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna hit zoom, I'm gonna hit six now, standard, all right? And this is what kind of comes up. Now, the first thing is what we can do is we can adjust the window here a little bit. All right, let's zoom, let's, uh, I know we just see like a straight line here and how does that help us? Well, it doesn't really help us at all because it's on the negative X side of this graph. I know that I cannot have, X cannot be a negative number in this problem. What does it mean to be a negative length, right? In reality, right? In the real world, there is no such thing as a negative length. You either have some length or you don't, right? But when we do math, um, you can have a negative length to things and it can help us calculate uh, certain things. But in this problem, we, don't, we, we do not have a negative length. All right, so just plug in zero there. The maximum now, X, I don't know what the maximum X can be, but we can make it big. Let, let's just go to 100 and let's see if we can get something uh, in the picture of our graph, okay? Now, same thing here, Y. Can the total cost, Can the, remember that the Y here represents the total cost. Can it be negative? Can the cost of something actually be negative? You go to the store, you wanna buy your Snickers bar and they're like, eh, that'll be negative $7, right? Well, because of inflation, it's at least $7 now, right? But is that possible? Right, would they say negative seven? No, either it's going to be free, that's the lowest it could possibly be, right? Or um, it's gonna be some positive value that they're gonna charge you, right? So I'm gonna plug in a zero. And now I don't know what the max should be, all right? So maybe we'll go to 100 here and let's see if we can get the function in our view. So we still don't have anything in our view. Right, so now what I need to do is I need to probably go up a little bit more on my Y. Right, so let's go to let's go to Zoom. Oh, no, Windows, sorry. Let's go to Y, and let's go to now maybe 1,000. Let's see if we can get something in there. Ah, now I see something. And, and you can tell that all of this, this whole right side is really unnecessary. So now I'm going to adjust the window in terms of X, and I'm just going to go to 10. All right, let's see if this works and hit graph. Oh, there it is, right? Now, this is kind of beautiful because we have to keep in mind what this really means, right? This really represents now, I'll put it right here, what this, what this represents now. Remember, what's on the y-axis is the total cost, and this is going to be the length of the side, right? The, the length of the width of, of the box. So this, the total cost reaches a minimum, right, when X is, looks like it's equal to roughly two, right? The total cost is the lowest, meaning I can assume that this graph goes on and on and on over there and on and on and on over there, right? But the total cost here is at a minimum. I don't know what that number is, but I know when X is roughly gonna be two. So what we could do is we could estimate it, plug in two here, and then find what the total cost is, 
right? And that would be kind of the answer, all right? Um, well, actually, not that that's the answer. The answer is determine the dimensions of the box. Sorry, it didn't say what is the minimum total cost. Dimensions of the box. So that actually is the answer. The answer probably would be x and x, uh, x is equal to 2, right? And then what I could do is plug in 2 here in this formula to find then the height, okay? But to find it exactly using the calculator, why don't we do this? Go to now, I want to find that minimum value. So go to second trace. That brings up your calculate function here, calculate and go to minimum, all right? It's gonna ask you for three things. You gotta to be to the left point of that, the leftmost point of, of this minimum. So as you can see, X is already around five, right? Now, five here on the graph is somewhere, oh, it's not even seen in the picture. So just keep hitting left. You see how X is getting smaller and smaller, and you'll start to see the cursor coming into view. Now, there's, there it is, right? So just make sure you're to the left of the point. It doesn't matter where you are, but just somewhere to the left, hit enter. Then make sure you go to the right of that point. Doesn't matter where, it doesn't have to be equal, go to there. And then just rough it, right? Just go find roughly the minimum and hit enter and look. There it is, right? It says that the minimum occurs when X is equal to two and Y, which is the total cost is equal to 600. So now in case the question changed on you and they wanted to know what is the minimum total cost, well, the answer would be 600. That is the minimum total cost, right? That looks like a six W or six Omega. I'm not really sure. But that would be 600. 600 now, uh, I guess cents actually. 600 cents, because keep in mind that we're talking about cents. So in other words, it'd be $6, right? So um, now the minimum here in terms of X is at two, like we said it should be, right? Based just on the picture. So I know that the dimension here that gives the least uh, cost is going to be, um, <clears throat> X being equal to 2. Now, let's go back to our picture here. I'm going to erase this. Hopefully, I didn't erase anything behind it. All right, and there's my box. So when X is now 2, and you know the volume of the box is 20, okay, what does the height have to be? So that's why I can use that formula, right? So 20 is going to be equal to 2 squared times then the height, which is going to be, sorry, my voice is like, feeling a little bit under the weather here and it's cold so <clears throat> my voice is starting to start to lose it but in any case h has to be five here all right so that's then going to be the height so just to wrap this up quickly those are the dimensions of the box so thanks for tuning in i really need a sip of water um but uh yeah anyway stay tuned for more we'll see you soon